Hey, everybody, this is Matt Noss from the Roach Coach Podcast, and you're about to listen to two guys. And I know these two guys. I've met these two guys. This is my third year in a row with these two guys talking about industrial metal. Industrial metal? Boo-goo-boo. <laughs> Who knows what the hell's going to happen tonight? I'm going to have fun, and you're going to have the fun. You're going to have all the fun on discography discussion. Hey, Matt, you're on the show, too. No, I'm not. <laughs> I have so much to share with you guys. Oh, God. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. I'm excited. You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 253, Velvet Acid Christ, with Matt Nas of Roach Coach. I don't know if I could say this about many of the other albums, but this one is probably the most fun. Hosted by Dan Terry. Oh, wow. I could I could be doing what I want right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but instead, I'm, I'm doing this. And Joseph Wren. Do you like to dance? I do like to dance, Matt. Presented by DiscussMetal.com. And if your classic disco includes thousands of dollars in RGB lighting, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe. That is Dan. Matt Nas hey, brings the industrial... Dan Ooh. is not having a good time, but well, <laughs> it's episode 253. 253. And we're talking about Velvet Acid Christ. 253. I mean, there, there's a couple of things I like about Industrial December. Like, it's just a couple. Like, like two things. <laughs> One, I like having Matt Nas on retainer for... <laughs> you I know, love it. Yeah, for for these torture sessions, uh, every at the end of every year, right before Christmas, nothing nothing sucks all the joy out of you like listening to some dude that may or may not be a vampire <laughs> sing about <laughs> all of these things that he just absolutely is sad about uh, to to the blips and bloops of my sadness. I, I actually in, I actually enjoy that aspect of it. The other aspect of it I enjoy is doing something a little bit different. But here's the problem with our show. And our and everything in general with what we do here. Do you guys remember that scene from Matilda, where you know this this kid says something about this cake, and the insane principal brings out this like gigantic chocolate cake, like larger than a man, you know, very very large cake, and she makes this disrespectful kid eat the entire cake in one sitting. Yeah. That's discography discussion. A little bit. Uh, in, in a nutshell, it is uh, sometimes, you know, you start off eating something that you very much enjoy eating. We all love chocolate cake. Uh, but to, <laughs> to consume as much of it, or in this case, industrial bands, uh, to consume so much of it at one time becomes uh, a little bit mind numbing. Like you get that sugar rush for a while until yeah. the in, until the indigestion starts to sit, starts to settle in. And before you know it, you're dizzy. You can't stay awake. You don't know what's going on, and um, that's uh, that. That's kind of where we're at with uh, with with Industrial December, which is why this is not a hard announcement. But we are probably going to stop doing the theme month of Industrial December after this year. <laughs> now, you guys, as listeners of the podcast have the option and you have like at least 11 months to convince us to do it again <laughs> but if you don't do that we're, we're not going to do that doesn't mean we're not going to talk about industrial bands we, we might does this mean this might. is my last time on the show no <laughs> absolutely not okay um, good. That, that would Woo. be a, that would be a crime against podcasting um, You're asking the so listeners instead of asking Matt, who could probably pull out at least five more years of bands with 20 <laughs> album discographies. Oh, he's got I, the I, easiest job around here. He shows up once a year like I Santa do. Claus. <laughs> yeah. And just drops in that chimney and is ready to go. I mean, I dread the day that you do Hansel and Gretel's uh, discography. <laughs> guys, let me know what day that is. I'm going to be sick. It takes a real weird German turn at the end there that is like, huh? That's a little too close for my liking. I tried I to talk him to into Combi Christ once, then I realized it was all downbeats. Oof. 
Yeah, oh rough. boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, I guess, you know, I guess we should uh we, we should talk about the band that we're gonna talk about, right? Uh, back. Velvet Acid Christ. Not to be confused with the UAC from the Doom series of video games. Uh, I played a lot of Doom while listening to Velvet Acid Christ. And unfortunately, <laughs> okay. I was I was too depressed to continue in a lot of places. Let me say, I played a lot of the new Halo multiplayer to this, and this is first-person shooter music to a T. Oh, yeah. Early 2000s first-person shooter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I know that we go album by album, and I know it's probably way too early to talk about this this body of work in the macro, but this is the ultimate music to have in the background <laughs> chainsaw and ghouls i played the new halo for a little bit but ultimately i decided that although halo may be infinite doom is eternal that is true <laughs> that is know. true a, i, I love that i love the new Derm- dooms I, i've really 2016 and uh eternal I've they're very empowering fun. games they're not the kind of games i like it though when like it's like the middle of the night and i'm just ripping and tearing you know down here and and you know a kid comes up to ask me for a glass of water and they tap me on the shoulder and I just like leap into the ceiling. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, wake up. Yeah. A little, little scary. You know, it's, it's a good thing that I don't actually have a chainsaw at my desk. We can't all be Fred Durst, but. A motherfucking chainsaw? That's right. Oh, wait, what? Oh, all right. that's correct. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. I'm, I'm off my game tonight. Anyway, uh, yeah. Velvet Acid Christ is a, is a body of work. And you mentioned first person shooters, but uh, I also get kind of a late 2000 or no i'm sorry late 90s uh like wipeout extreme g like all those all those like mm-hmm. hover racing games all had soundtracks like oh, this band oh yeah this is this is a selection pause menu uh <laughs> for a racing game uh i wouldn't be surprised like nothing that's like too bright like ssx this is not the soundtrack for this would be like um oh boy i know that you know this game PlayStation One and Need for Speed, you, not Need for Speed. You hit, you were in cars, and they were all kitted out, and there was an ice cream truck. Twisted uh, Metal, Twisted Metal. Yes, this is this is a Twisted Metal pause screen menu uh, <laughs> of a career. I, I feel like I'm gonna have the hardest time talking about this this body of work because although there are. 20 it feels like albums it also feels like there is one album <laughs> like man hey. i'm gonna give you some good news what is that buddy we did the research we looked into it and we decided there's really only 11 albums that well, you think. need to talk about i am so relieved well i'll tell you straight up and down the uh there is a w- volumes one through six of something that i said no thanks those oh, between like, the eyes <laughs> those look like eps to me and i have listened to eps in the past by mistake and i know that we don't count them so i didn't listen to any of the between the eyes well see you messed up because between the eyes volume two is the first uh velvet acid christ album fate re-released as Between the Eyes Volume 2 for some reason. Uh, because I was like, at first, whenever we started doing the listen through, I was like, I can't find this record. Like, it's nowhere. I couldn't even find it on YouTube. Couldn't find it on the Velvet Acid Christ Bandcamp. Couldn't find it anywhere. Discogs. Discog says it exists, but I can't find it. And then finally, I, I looked at the track listing, and I looked at the track listing for Between the, Between the Eyes Volumes. And yeah, so Between the Eyes Volume 2 is Fate... And Between the Eyes Volume 3 is Pestilence. Oh, geez. Okay. So I apologize. I'm going to own up right now in front of you. No, like, it should never be this hard. <laughs> it should, should never not be this, be this hard. hard. <laughs> I mean, I, ser- I searched for at least an hour here's try- the, trying um, to put all this together. Yeah. Here's the amount of research that I did on Velvet Acid Christ. Zero. <laughs> Zero percent. I came in, though, with Loaded. Because you were looking at a man who has seen Velvet Acid Christ live. Oh, well, that that takes everything that we think and throws it completely out the window. (laughs) Okay, Matt, I'm going to need you to go back in time. I'm going to need you to get your late 90s, early 2000s, late 2010s 
whatever time frame you want to go for. So this is, and, and it's great because we are coming up on the 21st anniversary of me seeing Velvet Acid Christ. I saw them December 10th, 2000. Wow. Here's your lineup. Velvet Acid Christ, Din 5, and How Job. Now, I was a How Job fan. Uh, How Job is another band of beeps and bloops. Uh, I think they got closer to that intelligent dance music wave of dark wave. Uh, they're not like Autecker or anything that kind of esoteric in the IDM space, but they made songs and I enjoyed them, but they aren't great. Uh, I thought they were great solutions for a song, a small planet. If you're looking for an album recommendation, start with that one and with that one in my book. Uh, but yep. So I was there to see that. And then um, uh, Velvet Acid Christ opened. And so we had an in-store at the record store that I worked at. And Velvet Acid Christ, Hajab, and Din 5 did a, uh, a signing. They did a signing. And I have pictures, guys. I have pictures. So in the... in the So you're not going to be able to see this too well here. But through the power of the internet, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to figure this out. Um, these are pictures from that day. I am fairly easy to spot because I am the guy wearing big furry blue boots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Did you I'm come right from now. a Cookie Monster cosplay? I did. I did. So there's Cookie a Monster's like, I gotta go. I gotta go watch Velvet Acid Christ here in two hours. <laughs> oh, me need to see if I can watch Velvet Acid Christ. Uh, so there is a picture of uh, our, my man from Velvet Acid, Acid Christ standing outside of the record store. He has Liberty Spikes with like a Cure waterfall in front of him. And it's exactly what you would expect. Uh, the lead singer of Velvet he's also He's also wearing an Avalanche's hockey jersey, which really upset me as a Detroiter uh, because obviously the Red Wings. So this guy's coming into our house. Not that I'm a huge hockey fan, but he's coming into <laughs> our house with an avalanche jersey. How dare you? How dare you? These are all going to be NFTs next week, right? That's correct. I'm just chopping them up. I'm selling I'm selling those non-fungies, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not making NFTs yet. Let's we will. Nathan Frederick Trolls. Oh, NFT that's where group. I come from. Nathan Frederick Travis. Nathan Travis. Frederick Travis. Glad to have you on the show, man. Oh, you're welcome. Let's talk about the non fungies. <laughs> he's like a weird, he's like a weird John Lennon. <laughs> Just like, oh, let's do the old tipsy doodle and talk about the non fungies. Did you know Ethereum's going to be the contract of the future? Unless you believe Cardano or Polkadot's going to be. Have you heard of Solana? I see how weird I got into crypto this year, guys. It won't uh, I gotta, that runs, I gotta check. I gotta check I gotta my, go my shib do that's down fifty percent. <laughs> last time I checked, go see a thing about anything else. And now your host for the evening, Velvet Acid Christ. Oh, it's me. <laughs> hey guys. Uh, All right, a, I guess. <laughs> here's the thing. I found. Uh, I found this beat maker. It has like three beats on it. So I play beat one and then I rattle some chains and then I use this vocal processor and I go, there's a rat in the time ship. There's a rat in the time ship was the lyric there. That's fair. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yes, I saw him live. Barely forgettable show. Uh, Liberty Spikes. Um Guy looked like he was in a lot of pain, though, and I give him that. Um, a lot of pain. Too much pain for me. Too much. Like, you almost you almost kind of felt sorry for the guy. Where <laughs> you're just like, you okay? You need a hug? How's it going? Oh, God, spikes. Never mind. Forget no, that. All right. Well, we'll just leave you be. Yeah. Do you need <laughs> you want an espresso? It never stops. <laughs> I can't stop. Well, before Matt Nas gives everyone a crash course in financing from the future, I'm going to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you are not a subscriber, then you can find everything Discography Discussion at DiscussMetal.com. We are on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. 
Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion Podcast, and it will. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan is going to tell us all about five-star reviews. We do love our five-star reviews here on Discography Discussion. If you want to leave us a review, say something crazy. You know we're going to read it on the show. Keep reaching out to us. Keep liking. Keep commenting. Keep subscribing. Keep doing all the things that podcasters like for you to do. Because if you don't do that, we literally die. And now Matt Nas is going to tell us all about Roach Coach and everything else that's going on on Gabber Media. Matt? Well, I'll tell you what. You can catch up on the Roach Coach podcast. That's Coach with a K. Um, on Gabber Media, uh, we cover new metal exclusively in the attempts to create the new metal canon. Um, it is three people besides me, the new metal b- bazooka, as I like to call it, straight into your ear holes. That's the way we like to roll it. And we are celebrating. We're at 268. So I was just thinking, like, we're like neck and neck. We started right around the same time, which is crazy to me. You can catch us. We're on everything like you guys are. We're on iTunes. We're on the Stitcher. We're on the Spotify. Um, Roachcoach.com. Coach with a K. Or go to GabberMedia.com and go straight to Roach Coach. That is fine. And you subscribe and Roach Coach comes to you. That's correct. It's incredible. Just, I have a little bike. The coach literally pulls up to your house. <laughs> well, Lord, Matt, and Jenny just coach pile wagon. out like a clown car. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> the Roach Coach wagon is a coming through. <laughs> Keep on rolling. Ching, ching. <laughs> ching, ching. We have a great time. Um, we're goofballs. I'm a goofball. It is Jenny and Lauren who keep the uh, train on the track over there. And then I chime in. So if you hate this, you'll hate the Roach Coach podcast. I'm great at marketing. That's what's going on. That's what's going on in our neck of the woods. I'm still doing transmissions from the dark side. I'm still yeah, doing. you are. I still, uh, on occasion, do matters. Not very often anymore, but that is okay. And then in January, I'm doing a show with my brother. So that's going to be fun. That's exciting. Yeah. we're gonna. And this is unfortunately not a joke, even though I goofed on NFTs. We, we are going to interview artists and NFT artists and uh, see where that goes and have some fun. That's it. That's it. I'm not pushing crypto. I'm I'm really not. I like to goof on it because I think it's goofy. It's fun. But we'll talk about everything important that exists today. Somebody laughed at at some point in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, industrial music, like, come on. (laughs) (laughs) I feel, you know, okay. so the first two records give me give me the leaflet. It was his sound still developing or was this guy hatched? Like, okay, so (laughs) I was all right. So I was uh, I guess I'm the only one to listen to those two. Yeah. So that yeah, we made that clear earlier. Okay, so Fate is like really more um it's not really it actually sounds very different than than a lot of, of the other Velvet Acid Christ material. I was actually a little thrown off of it by it because I was like, Oh, okay, hold on a second. So it's this kind of band. You mm-hmm. know, and like I was a little bit um it's very subdued for the most part. And it's weird because I read the track listing first, which is what I was like the most familiar with. And it, it kind of it was kind of weird to me at first because I thought it was going to be some sort of like angry, like almost like brutal, at least for industrial, you know, because you have song titles like Serial Killer 101, Descent into Darkness, Hail to the Dead Souls. And the last one, which was my favorite, I'm going to wrap myself in your intestines. Uh, but it's like a really slow, like goth dark wave type of yes. album. It's very... Um, it's very subdued. It's very painful. It's very sad. So whenever you said he looked like he was in pain, this is this is why he's still is clearly going through the same gallbladder pain that I'm going through currently. Um, you know, it's it's rough. You know, day in and day out. So like I really identified with this. Uh, you know, when I when I listened to it earlier this week, way earlier this week, it felt like a hundred years ago. But uh, this is a week. But this album is is long. That's one thing I kind of don't like about these albums is that they're all like. Oh, they're like a buck 20, <laughs> you know, yeah. On, on, yeah. this was a Yeah, this was absolutely in the time period of the late 90s to early 2000s where they were like, how many minutes can a CD hold? Well, let's use all of those. Yeah. Those and this was a cost cassette, five cents a piece to press. You know that, right? I think this was a cassette starting out even. I, I think it was pressed to CD later. But yeah, it's like, let's just take up as much time as we humanly can. And and a lot of it's unnecessary. Like, 
I'm not saying this about the first two records, but if I move into the rest of the catalog, and if you if you have any more more points for Fate or for um, let me get it right, Pestilence. I'll, oh well, I'll, yeah. There's one little thing, real quick. If I can, if I can jump in there. Yep. Um. So Pestilence was a hundred percent different. It was an about face away from the Fate sound, which was dark and dreary and meandery and very vampire-y. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like if you if you wanted to read Anne Rice novels, like listen to Fate while you while you read them, and it, you'll be you know perfect. Uh, whereas um, Between the Eyes, Volume Three, otherwise known as Pestilence. Um, what is a much more dance oriented album? Oh, wow, it's like, okay. yeah, it's like super upbeat <laughs> and sounds a little bit closer to what you would get from Velvet Acid Christ in their more traditionally known catalog. Uh, this is where a lot more samples are, are being used, and everything kind of goes like I think they were trying to get into clubs here. I think yeah. the first record they were like, okay, yeah, we did that, I've got all my personal crap out of the way, so like now let's let's just dance, baby. These came out the same year also, so pick your poison. Do you want the long, drawn-out, dreary-sounding record, or do you want the, it's a sequencer, guys. We just, we make the beat, and then an hour later, we hit stop. Well, hearing that, the rest of the catalog kind of makes a lot more sense because it's truly both of those things in a blender. Yep. Like, yep. and I think at the time... As a as someone who had fun with knives and neuroblastoma, uh, in at, if they weren't in my collection, they were in my friend's collection, and I had mixed CDs with songs from those bands on them, or mixed tapes with songs from, from those albums on them. They these albums, if I move into neuroblastoma, which why don't we? 1995, Matt Nas has gone straight past whatever this band is. We're into neuroblastoma. Probably the first record I heard by this band. Yep, me too. But I don't remember somebody pointing saying, this is Velvet Acid Christ. It was another record that was trying to fit in with that trend. There's a lot of that industrial sequenced everything we talked about previously. I'm going to say it one time, Nine Inch Nails. Don't yell at me too hard, well, Dan. I, but I got to say it because that's what everybody was trying to throw in and say, we can do that thing, guys, and get paid. And we don't have to spend hours in the studio, days, months, millions of dollars. I have this Casio keyboard and I can write songs on it. Next. There is absolutely that point, but I feel like there's a lot more homage to Headhunter from from 242, and I'm definitely like the Nitzereb, um, uh, one new lock the target. No, that's Headhunter. It's um, uh, joining the chant, uh, like that that type of that type of programming as well. Maybe a little less on the Nitzereb and a lot, very heavy on the front 242. Um, uh, headhunter feel and but then there's also this weird sideline that you're talking about that was very 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 popular at the time uh front 242 did it but also we're talking frontline assembly we we're talking like those types of bands where it's like three note synth line atmospheric warehouse sound sample from a horror movie like that might be my favorite explanation of what this sound is warehouse sound (laughs) yeah it's just like empty warehouse rattling machines smoke Uh, machines right like flashing green lights um yeah and it's just like don't hit the arpeggiator yet or turn the bpms on the arpeggiator down because this isn't really dancing. We're going to do like a boom, 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 boom. They say that it's madness for a man to eat a sandwich. Like, do, do. <laughs> Made of flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, and then heavily processed vocal. I'm going to throw you guys a bone here, too, that a lot of these songs are just remakes of songs that were on Fate and um, whatever the second one, Pestilence. Uh, (laughs) I keep wanting to call them Between the Eyes because that's how I remember them. So this is a remix album is what you're saying. 
it's not a remix album. It's a debut in a way. Right. It's, it's almost like those first two were like those releases only were like 150. So it was his friends. So it was basically like a demo. Those were the demo discs. And then they had the opportunity to make the album. Yeah, because he they spent a lot of their career on uh, Metropolis, which is like the stalwart industrial goth label, like almost everything at some point. If it was going to be in that genre, went through Metropolis. Um, Zothamog, probably a little bit, but like Metropolis was like the big gun. And uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, re- I remember hearing this album and I remember it feeling even at that time where it's just like watching somebody play Wolfenstein while this is in the background is like, yep, that's right. This is the way that this goes. <laughs> you know, this is pretty cool. <laughs> but then like as an I don't know as an adult because that's kind of a weird uh, it's a weird point of view but as a as the person I am now listening to it who thought it was really interesting and was it was into it at the time it's like how could I listen to an hour of this again <laughs> you know like because, an hour and 13 minutes <laughs> but it, it is that thing of like how did I I you know like this is also very good night driving music I will give it that like I, I think that we are both in the Midwest still. So we both have like cityscapes and rust belt energy galore. So this does work well with the night drive. That is my favorite thing to do with the more atmospheric industrial mm-hmm. bands. I get a real lost highway vibe. Yep. Major highways around St. Louis include, but may not be limited to 55, 21, 270. Oh, this is an episode of the California. And Dan knows how much I love to drive old 21 listening to industrial in the middle of the night with your high beams on. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is uh, so I'm not going to lie to you guys. I started listening to Velvet Acid Christ back in like two or three months ago. I like when I guys, when I say this week, I, I mean, anytime between now and last year, you know, uh, <laughs> I get ready for these. Uh, so a, a few weeks back, I actually took a drive down to Little Rock, Arkansas to, uh, to see Living Sacrifice play uh, and have an amazing, amazing, amazing calzone at uh, Vino's down there. And um, then I just I ate a calzone and left. Uh, <laughs> but as I was like, all right, boys, great show. I'm heading back now. My five hour drive. Uh, I listened to Neuroblastoma like three times when I was uh, making the drive. And then I still wasn't home, which was kind of disappointing. Uh, <laughs> but... You know, it definitely has that lost highway vibe. And and Joe knows when I go on a road trip, I do not take the major highways. I drive through the ghost towns. I drive through, you know, I take, then I take this back is, Yeah, roads. this is like a perfect soundtrack for that, especially if it's night. Like, yeah, it, yeah I do. And I'm sure that you have this because we're both in the Midwest. We're like sometimes in the summer where it's super hot in the day, but then at night it breaks or there's a rain and then there's a post rain eat yep oh yeah but like your windows are down this stuff works and you're like you're going and there's trees everywhere and you're on a road and it's like you are not going anywhere but you just aren't where you were (laughs) you know what i mean like obviously that's how movement works but like i feel a kinship of i gotta get the fuck out of here so i'm just gonna go somewhere and i don't care where that is so this is great and it continues to be great music for that. I would still put this on as that as that soundtrack to that type of drive. Yeah, the only downside to my plan, though, is I was streaming these. And uh, when nuts. you take the back roads, the internet, not so good uh, okay. in, in, with the cell towers and all that. So it needed to be more glitched out. <laughs> more. Yeah, well, it wasn't. If it was glitched out, that would have been cool. Instead, it was more like, I'm in this creepy town listening to this creepy music. This is awesome. Now I'm in this creepy town in the middle of the night in dead silence. <laughs> like it's now uh, a bad okay. time to show you there's a button on here that says download offline, listen later. Yeah, I don't know. I I I, I can't be bothered. I know to be what clicking you're saying. The little I know hamburger on the right hand side. <laughs> you know, I, I, I I'm not a big forethought guy all the time. Yeah, and yeah, I don't always put that put that down. So like we agree, this is a great album. This is a great sound um, I, that, I that, feel that they've like come up with. I feel like with between and it's hard for me to separate neuroblastoma from fun with knives for me because I, I kind of experienced them both at the same time. But I feel like if you were to enter the world 
and just want the one, one of those two is probably going to do it for you. And you're you're going to be in a good place because you're going to get the sound. I feel like it's a purer version of the sound too, which sounds odd, but like it's almost like failing into technology to make it work versus having technology that can effortlessly make it work. Like, you know, I, I always think of hip hop producers that were using sampling stuff in like 91 where it was like samplers were terrible, but they still had to figure out how to make it work. I love that stuff so much more than, yeah, I'm on a genius beat maker right now. And here's a song, (laughs) you know, not it's the birthing pain of analog to digital. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's it. That is absolutely it. Where it's just like, it sounds shitty, but it's the best it could possibly sound at that. Like I always say, it's like, there's such a, I pitch tinniness to a lot of like there's not a lot of guts to 90s industrial like it, it is missing a heft but it is akin to the sound like if if you were to re-record these or re-reimagine these songs now with that mid-range and bass I would be like not the same it's not the same and these later albums unfortunately when we get there we'll prove that out 1998 calling on the dead Calling of the dead, my friend, with a V. They, they clearly don't know how to say of, but uh, that's fine. Uh, calling of the dead takes a little bit of a swing more towards like, we're going to now use as many samples as possible, as many times as possible. Yeah. Um, and they, 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 they spell everything wrong uh, <laughs> in, the, in the track titles. Uh, which I was probably edgy and cool in, in 1998 or 1997 or whatever they did this. And um, yeah, this one's weird to me because it's this it's this mix of like gothy vampire crap, but then also like trying to sound like cutting, like bleeding edge for the late 90s. Uh, like this bleeding edge, like industrial electro electro sound. Yeah. Um, and, and there are times where I think it's fine. Uh, like the song Malfunction, I got really excited for because when it starts playing that he starts playing this like um this like little ditty i mean i don't even is a little ditty can i say a little ditty um you can say a little ditty. just like little melodic flourish just in the one background time. which i thought was really cool and kind of accentuated the dark sound and gave it a like kind of a little bit of an electronica vibe mm-hmm. and like i was actually like really vibing with that oh, but then it just kept going for five minutes <laughs> and i was like oh yeah this is why i get all bummed out when we're doing this theme month <laughs> I, I, and it's kind of like that's the Achilles heel of a lot of these early pine. I mean, like Velvet Acid Christ or not, this is absolutely a movement of the first bedroom producers, the first bedroom, you know, recording studios. The thing is, when you're alone in the room and it's going, you don't always have the best editors to say, like, you got it. <laughs> You had it two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. If you're going to fade it out anyway, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like there isn't like a stunning conclusion to all of these songs. So stop it. (laughs) It's not like you're listening to like a seven minute Opeth song that goes a hundred different places as you progress on. This whole style of music is just like, let's meander for five to six minutes and then call it good and then turn it in the next morning. Like it's... um, there's a lot of that and there's also a lot of like very on the nose edginess which i don't think that you could criticize things for being on the nose before 2000 um but it's there i mean using samples that they knew absolutely would piss people's parents off yeah absolutely And, and intentional but i i i'm trying to find it as i'm talking to you right now because um there is frontline assembly was another band that would use a sample and would use they basically made a whole song of samples from time cop where oh yeah where yep. it's like almost a that sounds amazing yeah <laughs> damn we're bringing it back frontline Let's assembly see, next december i'll nope. tell you what i think honestly and this is no this is no joke if we did an episode an industrial december episode for 2022 we should do frontline because i feel like artistically they take a lot more risks and they have a they have a better arc not saying that we should but i would i would definitely return for an fla episode 
because I also don't know the back half of their catalog. I stopped right around 2000, where I stopped with every <laughs> industrial. 2003. Uh, yeah. 2003 is about the hard cutoff. This record reminds me that industrial bands in the 90s were trying to create a singular vibe that they would deliver when it was their turn to lead the show. Now, if you go back 20 years before this, you have all the hard rock and metal bands that you heard on the radio, but then you had like Henry Chapin telling his 12, 16 minute stories, right? I'm, Never I'm, heard I'm that still, shit on the radio. Nope. That was a journey of emotion go up, go down, come back around, and then the story's over. This was put the people in the pot of water, turn on the burner, lower to a simmer. This is the next 20 minutes. And I think that's cool, and I can't really explain why, because I didn't go to a lot of industrial shows. I didn't sit and just feel the beat for the next hour and 20 minutes. But yeah. when I listen to it, it falls into that area of atmosphere for me, where even though I like what I'm hearing, I don't have to spend a lot of time breaking it down to find what the meaning is. Mm -hmm. Truly, I think the lyrics are supposed to be ignored. Otherwise, they would be more audible. And now I think you guys can understand why doing episodes like this are kind of torturous for me. <laughs> because I'm always looking for the deeper meaning on things. I don't know if it's because I was a little kid and somebody told me I was special. But I always like to come in in these episodes and be all like, well, the thing is, guys, this song is about the loss of a loved one and how it affected such and such, you know, yeah. John Candy songwriter man. Uh, this is how it affected his life. And if you actually listen to the musical arrangement, you can, it actually chronicles every event in order of, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm always looking for that. And I don't get that at all with these types of bands. <laughs> and, <laughs> but I, I, I do enjoy the sound overall, but it's hard for me to turn off my brain. We talk about this a lot when people are like, when you're listening to stuff for the show, what do you do while you're listening to stuff? Do you play video games? Do you, you know, uh, on Roach Coach, you guys talk about the Robert Christgau challenge yeah. of doing it, you know, in, in several different ways. Um, you know, one while cleaning, driving. I, I don't have that. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, when I sit down and listen to a record, I sit down and listen to a record as one watches a movie. Uh, or And, and so and for a, this kind I, of stuff. Honestly, sitting here, that is a, such a beautiful experience. Because I think music is fucking magic. I think music is super powerful. So to be able to have moments, because I, I have so few of those moments. You know what I mean? Where I'm Oh, like, I agree. It's it's late at night. It's at the expense of my health. Like at this yeah. point in my life, a hundred percent. Like, you know, I get like two hours every night. That's that's Dan time, and I can spend Dan time doing something that you know is not that. <laughs> but whenever you got this many albums to get through, it's like. You know, let's just do it. And, and I do listen in the car and stuff like that. Of course. And and but it, it is one of those things where when I when I was doing the actual analyzations for these records, all I could come up with, if you look if you look at my notepad, it's just like cool sample here. Or hey, this was from Event Horizon. <laughs> or yeah. you know, like, like like I can I can pick up on stuff You're like, like that. The sleuth cracking yeah. the code on the samples. Dan, do you yeah. want to make a deal? A deal with the devil. <laughs> well, it's funny because they use a whole bunch of Event Horizon quotes on another uh, record. And the reason I know all those quotes by heart is because my favorite band, Zeo, released an album called uh, Liberate Tex and Ferris, and they use tons and tons of samples from Event Horizon. So I'm like hearing these samples. And so I'm engaged in a way that like I'm, I'm referencing another album where <laughs> everybody else would be referencing a movie. I mean, I watched Event Horizon. It was... It was a movie I watched, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's hard because I'm looking, I'm looking for that deeper meaning and these lyrics, I'm just not finding it. The lyrics are so sparse and repeated over and over again. And, and, you know, far be it for me to be the guy who says this, but I can't understand what he's saying most of the time. Anyway, yeah, um, I reached even, him. even, yeah, even with the lyrics, you didn't reach me. I can, I can understand death metal dudes. Fine. It's. There's something no, about can't. like being behind 12 <laughs> walls of there's something about being behind 12 walls of static. Yeah. And uh and, but then also distorting your voice on top of the static. You know, uh, I mean every industrial band has that sound where the singer's like, "All right, I put 12 so 12 staticky socks that I rubbed on the carpet over my microphone." Yeah. You know, it, let's yeah, go for it. Yeah, it's basically I'm singing through razor blades and glass. Whisper. Right. Yep. Yeah, a lot of times they're like scream whispers. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm looking I'm looking for those lyrics. I'm looking for that deep connection. 
and I'm not getting it on these early albums, but I do believe there is a record that's coming up later in the discography where they actually pull all that away. Yes. And it actually becomes very relatable, (laughs) you know, in its own way. Uh, But yeah, so this record, uh, this record's fine. Calling of the Dead. It's it's supposed to be edgy. It's supposed to be something that that children that feel like they haven't gotten a fair shake in life are going to listen to and and, and relate to and, and just be different for the sake of being different which is god i'm turning into such a boomer like uh but like <laughs> listening just for the sake of, of 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 listening i mean it's the same reason i listen to metal at all right you know because it's like oh this is unconventional wait till someone else hears this that was i, I will say that 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 was a huge component of my listening as a kid is that this was the this genre of music was inaccessible to my parents like even if i didn't love it I knew that they hated it. Right. And I just it sounds like needed, the computer's breaking. Yeah. I just needed something like a lot of kids do. That's yours. And it was like, this was mine. And although the although Velvet Acid Christ, I would say, was never a real go-to, it was in my life enough that it was like, yeah. And it is, to your point, it's a vibe more than it is a mission statement. You know, you, you have somebody come up and, you know... S- sing lyrics that touch your heart you're like oh my god I, this band's the best this is much more of like we're in a warehouse <laughs> somebody put an arpeggiator in that corner smoke machines there's flashing lights machine rocking. <laughs> somewhere the vampire Lestat is hanging out and I'm just gonna sing through these glass and tacks are you ready to have fun with knives Matt I am 1999 Probably, the, well, this was the tour that I saw him for, even though, um, yeah, because I don't think another album came out. Let me see. Let me just double check my thing. Uh, so I guess Twisted Thought Generator was the album that he was touring with, but everybody had fun with Knives. So this is like an album cover I've seen a ton. Um, when I looked at Spotify's list and list, re-listened to Fun With Drugs and Slut, I was like, oh, yes, I know these songs. I have danced to these songs or they have been playing in the background at the club in the bar area. So, yes, I'm I'm more I was more familiar with this record. And uh, it was quite, again, quite popular, but also quite reminiscent in, in style of what has come before. This is not the first time the band sounds like a pause menu from a late 90s, early 2000s choose your video game console but i got some serious flashbacks to san francisco rush listening to this one (laughs) the answer is playstation you you would have been playing the playstation to get these types of soundtracks and 64 because cds (laughs) well yeah n64 had these soundtracks but they were like 28 seconds of the same audio looped over and over again so they could keep the file size low compressed all to hell just so it would fit on the cartridge so a Velvet Acid Christ album. <laughs> so Velvet Acid Christ, yeah, the whole discography in one N sixty. I don't know. You guys ever play that game? The for, do you guys ever play that game Forsaken? I hated so, that game for years. It's like Descent. It's if you've ever great. played, if you've ever played Descent, <laughs> you're these like cyberpunk idiots on on hover bikes, going through these super dark, dingy, barely lit levels or warehouses. Um, oh god! Just shooting each other. And like the, the and the cover of the game is like a woman, a woman with a with a heart tattoo on her <laughs> face with a tear coming down. You know, like exactly what it needs to be. Honestly, uh, they did a lot of market research before you know for all of that. Uh, and the game is, eh, but the soundtrack is very much like this album for me. Fun with knives. It's um, almost a little bit more like slow, like a little bit more like fate. Uh, in, in my opinion, a little bit more downtrodden. Like, there's some speed, more sped up beats in Absolutely. places, but it's got this like dark wave sort of sound. I don't know if you guys ever listened to a band called Lycia. Yes. Um, I'm a big fan of Lycia, and because it's not, it's dark and downtrodden and electronic or whatever, but it's not quite industrial. It's more um, just atmospheric music, um, ambient type of music. And um, this is very much like, like, this reminded me a lot of Lycia. Except for, believe it or not, the vocals are actually less whispered here than they are on like a Lycia record. The the vocals on this one I felt were a lot more present. Like if if you wanted to decipher, the possibility was finally there. 
the um it is funny kind of in the discog discography that you can kind of tell the direction of which he's going to go in by the first couple of tracks because there is a specific drum pattern and synth sound which is like it's almost like when you cut a piece of wood on a circular saw and it gets to the end and it's like Meow. Yep. Like when you hear that wow, 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 sound happening and the drum kicks in and you're like, oh, this is the more dancey Velvet Acid Christ album. And it usually happens within the first song. The first or the second song is like, okay, he's in a little bit more dance mood. And this one, it's like, oh, he's a little bit more of a empty warehouse mood. Right. Yeah. It, it's, this is, it, I think this is probably one of the more diverse records. Yes. Just because, like, um, the dude who we haven't named at all, uh, Brian Erickson, um, is kind of the uh, brain he the heart. behind behind yeah. all of this. And yeah, he's very uh, very specific. It, we we use we use a terminology on this show called a bag of tricks. How every band has a bag of tricks, and they 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 try to find creative ways to showcase what is in their bags in every single album. And this band, like their bag of tricks, was those first two records um you know fate and um pestilence and this is again you know like matt said it's very like they just kind of blend those in the most creative ways they can but they don't add a lot and this is this is the part of the discography where i started kind of getting a little bit exhausted because i was like okay i like this record but i don't know how much i'm gonna like anything after it i get you and but i also think like in the projection or the or the yeah i would projection is the right word i am using the right word this fun with knives is their first album on metropolis so that really means from a distribution standpoint this is why this one's pretty much the one of the first ones that comes into my mind when I think of the band. And I, I think when Metropolis got it, I think they reissued Neuroblastoma so they could get that one a little bit more in people's hands. Or here's the thing, the goth industrial scene in the Detroit area was pretty vibrant, mainly because of the record store that were in the area. Um, I worked at East Alley Records and I worked at Rockabilly's, but there was a couple other stores that were local that that were also carrying this and had DJs that worked at City Club, which is like our cornerstone um, goth industrial club that's been there since the 80s. And like because that club was happening and people were looking for the music, Eventually, all the music shut down, all the record stores shut down, and Bill's East Alley Record was the only one that was open. So we were getting like all the European imports and all the Metropolis releases. So like that's how a lot of this stuff came across my path is because Metropolis would either have all the agreements with the EU labels or they would just reissue it for an American version themselves for the licensing deal. Because a lot of this stuff, even like... Velvet Acid Christ would pop over in the the EU before it even became a thing over here, which is like peculiar, but they they wanted that sound. And then it finally became a thing over here. So it's not surprising to hear you say what you've heard, what you've said, but it's also not surprising to see this album on Metropolis be followed right up with the next album in, in the discography, which I feel is probably the most complete project from Velvet Acid Christ. Twisted Thought Generator 2000. Now, I will say that probably my favorite is still Neuroblastoma, but I feel like this is a complete, this is a like start to finish cogent album. He knows what he's doing. He's had all of this experience the five years prior. So I just felt like he got to this point with this album that it was like, I have my bag of tricks. You're right. Like I have the tooth. I kind of have the two school of thoughts. It's the best mixing of them that I can do. It's all the samples I want to throw in in the world. You could kind of hear my voice more and and here's my pain on the scrolls. Uh, here, <laughs> uh, here's uh, here's the uh, fan fiction I wrote from that uh, Vampire the Masquerade uh, campaign I've been on for the last three years. So, you know, that that's what I feel like. I do not judge this album harshly i feel like all right awesome this was his you know in in a band's history like this was his shot like this was the thing i don't think it took him into wider appeal but i feel like 
this album in the trajectory of the band totally makes sense. This is the first time it sounds like a movie score more than an interlude soundtrack or the next yep. hour and a half of your life. I can see that. I can absolutely see that. I like the analogy of Vampire the Masquerade because this truly sounds like they turned him loose on something they already had and said, score this. Yeah, it's I can a see that. It's a start to finish interesting set of ideas. At its core, it's still very atmospheric, but it's a little more Lost Highway and a little less Ghosts, if that makes sense. I think that they're starting to be i think that part of the appeal is that there are more traditional song structures creeping in here yes so one of the things that i've complained about the most was meandering it, it meanders on too long no editor you know? nobody's saying hey that's enough yeah whereas here you've got a little bit more of a tight-knit album clocks in at right under an hour because you're, you're still listening to velvet acid christ so it's still going to be a Solid 50, 58 minutes. Like, you're not going to get to work and this be over. This CD must um, have been enhanced with some wallpapers for Windows 98. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, would, I would not be surprised. <laughs> or a video, like some really grainy video that's in like 32K or something. Just but, pixelated to shit. Yeah, but the Three music minutes sounds behind the, same. the scenes. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm starting to see like more like rock sound structures here. We're not to verse, chorus, verse or anything no. like that. Um, and we, I don't think we ever really get there. And that is one of my favorite things about this band is that even at this point, which I would consider to be their commercial height. Correct. Um, at least as much commercial height as this band's going to get. And I like that there's still that integrity. There's still that vision. Like as an unpleasable metal fan who doesn't like bands to change. Ladies and gentlemen, um, unpleasable metal fan. He hasn't done that. He hasn't no. changed. But he's just get, he's perfected his craft. Now, the thing that sucks also about being an unpleasable metal fan is, yeah, don't change at all. But, man, maybe just he maybe see what else you guys got. You know, like, <laughs> don't uh, change you know, at all. A, just don't do that again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the double edged sword, you know, uh, where I'm this is the starting point, this album on B flat instead of a flat. I was what already exhausted. I was already exhausted with fun with knives. Yeah. And this album didn't help in that exhaustion like i i've listened to this one a few times because it sonically it sounds the best it sounds Correct. better than anything else that they've it's ever the best done. produced album by yeah. leaps and bounds it sounds incredible on these giant bookshelf speakers that jeff gave me they, they sound um, you know it like really top tier stuff i had to turn the bass down because i thought like i, I was Whoa. gonna blow something yeah what you I was, get, I was, Elax? What are we talking uh, about here? They're Infinity speakers. Ooh. Um, yeah, I think he got them at a garage sale for like ten bucks each. But they are like audiophile levels. I, I got, I got a big old, yeah, I got a big old Sony amp head for it. Actually, okay. So, it, full disclosure: if you look at the new discography discussion logo, yeah, let's take a look. This one, uh, that's my amp head underneath, uh, or in the, in the middle there. And, um, yeah, this could be the cover of a Velvet Acid Christ album, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, yeah, so it's got that big head and then the cassette deck and the CDs down underneath. But basically, uh, and then the turntable's on a different table up higher, so the vibrations are away from it. Uh, but, yeah, it was... Uh, I, I, I used to not be able to tell the difference between production that well until I had this kind of, like, producer set up here. And, uh, yeah, I, I was blown away by how good this album sounded. I guess I just when you're this many albums in, I, I was starting to just be like, okay, so when does the dude decide that this is not for him anymore? Because everybody's gonna everybody's gonna reach that point. Everybody's gonna be all like, oh, this is not for them. Right, because this is I mean, this is the album that they toured on and they did a North American tour in December. Yeah. Industrial December. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> so yeah, I mean it makes it makes total sense. And like you said, this album makes a ton of sense where it's like everybody dude everybody loved fun with knives let's let's keep let's those vibes down. going yeah let's yeah, die let's double on this down. let's get it going let's dial it in let's add a little bit more structure but keep keep the thing that is you but i mean it's like it makes a lot of sense because the other touchstone i think for this band besides like 242 and uh, is skinny puppy from an atmospheric standpoint because they could do that type of thing but even skinny puppy had warlock you know like they yeah. had they had songs that were actual songs. Sure, they had songs that sounded like meat packing plants. Like, yeah, 
they had that, but there was this is that push to be like, if Metropolis had an A and R guy, he's like, we need a single. <laughs> we just need yeah. something. We need something that we can wrap around that we can get into the you know the clubs because he played City Club. You can't right. Velvet Acid Christ came here and played City Club, so it was like. But it the thing is like two four two with um, Headhunter has that four on the floor. Warlock is just at that point goth industrial royalty, so they're gonna it's gonna get people dancing. And then you have, I mean, Nine Inch Nails wasn't getting played a ton, but like even if you look at Ten Thousand Homo DJs, the Revolting Cox stuff, like they all had a song that was like you can dance to this one. Are you saying we can dance if we want to? Well, you can leave your friends behind. But what if you can't dance? Well, if you can't dance, then you, I guess you're no friend of mine. Well, you know, I wasn't much of a dancer <laughs> <laughs> growing up, uh, which may be a shock to everyone listening. I know I've always put off the vibe that I'm a huge dance guy. We all uh, had one goal, and that was to find Dan in whatever dark room the dancing was going on in. It was not complicated. Find the corner. That's where he is. If he's not there, find the other corner. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I prefer kind of the the the, the like sad bastard music side of this band. Yeah, uh, more that. than I enjoy the more than I enjoy the the, the upbeat dancey stuff. Mm-hmm. And I never under, I never understood the whole goth industrial thing, which they're like, yeah, buddy, we've listened to like three years of you, totally not get it. Um, but the uh, the thing of it is, is that like I just never really. I couldn't figure out how people looked as aggressive as they did without the music actually being aggressive, which is why I think I went down the more metal because it was more the more metal road because it was more, you know, I don't know, like meat headed and there was like crescendo and stuff. And this this music is more of an art of subtlety than it is an art of uh, of just all out war. Um, there is and- a certain foppishness to goth industrial there's much more it gives me much more renaissance fair vibes than gladiator vibes like metal can go into the gladiator vein of oh, just yeah. like uh you're gonna get hit and you're gonna get a hit a lot you yeah. know, like whereas like renaissance can be a little more like we're fancy <laughs> like it's, it's like, well yeah they're like they're like listen to this this sounds like an actual harpsichord Whereas oh, I'm, I'm over, I'm over here listening to Hate Breed being like, I like the part of the song where he says destroy everything, you know, like right. it's just, um, it's totally different. And I think that as, as we as we transition into Hex Angel, 2003, Utopia Dystopia. Yeah, this one's more kind of my bag as far as how I like this band to sound. Yeah, it this- sounds a lot more like Lycia. <laughs> <laughs> definitely and I, I think is this the album and I didn't take very copious notes because like I said these were cursory listens at times when's the first album that really has female vocals strong on it uh, that's later on I believe that is uh, that might even be subconscious landscape it's subconscious landscapes okay yeah. so he's a little bit further away from that um, so we will get there because once that happens, I'm like, how'd you get Madonna on this track? Um, <laughs> sounds fuck great. Um, we're entering kind of this middle. It's very odd in the time frame that he has this 2000 push and then he disappears for three years. You know, that there isn't any new music. There's no, I mean, there's remixes here and there. There's things that come up, but he basically is like, and I'm sure if if we were to find the guy or have an interview, I think he would probably say something about I broke down after 2000, I couldn't do it, and then I had a, <laughs> I had another album. I did, and then you know, I mean, it's just like, look, man, I know he probably had another fucking job because that was paying the bills, and then he took all this time off to do the road gig and to see if he could make this and turn this into the thing that he wanted it to be and it did or didn't work the way that he wanted it to and then he retreated and it took some time for himself it makes sense i'm making up a narrative for the guy i don't know him and we didn't ask him but like it sounds like he based on how this album sounds he definitely went through some 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 rough time. He, he went through some like nights where he like put on a pair of pants and is like sitting in an apartment with his feet up, eating like Chinese food out of a out of out of a takeout box, 
And so much time has passed. He doesn't even realize that when he looks over out his window, it's practically 6.30 in the evening and the sun has already started to go down. It sound, That's what this album sounds like. It sounds like he had a lot of days go by just like that. Mm -hmm. Like just, uh, what am I going to do? Or what am I, you know, what, what is my purpose here? I tried being creative. I tried being expressive. Disintegrate. And, uh, all I got fade. is this terrible t-shirt. Yeah. like and, uh, These lyrics pretty much sum it. Uh, this is from the the lovingly titled Misery. This, this is the end. Disintegrate or fade the undying open grave. It's not funny. It's horrible. But like, it's, uh, like yeah. that's a guy who's not doing great. Yeah, he's he's the kind of guy you want to do just like a wellness check on. Are you okay, bro? Be you like, hey, right? buddy, I'm coming over. I got the brewskis. I'm I got, fine. I'm working you know, on a new album. Yeah, there's a couple of pizzas, you know. Well, great. Why don't you show me some of your new tunes? And he Just shows you the new tunes. Fade the undying yeah. open cream. And you're like, cool. How, how about we put the game on, huh? Like, let's see. Welcome what to else our we misery. Welcome to our <laughs> dreadful dreams. Welcome to our misery. Welcome to our dreadful dreams. Oh, God. Yeah, it's uh, it's like, okay, buddy. Well, I'm really glad I came by to check on you tonight. Yeah, dude, uh, I'm glad yeah. you're doing all right. <laughs> Glad you're sounds doing like all you're, right. It sounds like you're back on the horse. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, this is rough. I mean, if I if I had listened to this when when depressed, I'd be yeah. telling you guys how it was like the best album I've ever heard in my life. You know, and because uh, I, I do think it's yeah. very strong for a depressing album. I would agree with that, and I would also say that like, yeah, if it hits you in the right mood, you're this is your the soundtrack. This is this is where you you could live in this for a while and. You know, I am in general not as sad as I used to be, but I can get sad like anybody. And this is this is moody, sad music. And it has just enough lack of dynamic range to turn it up loud and drown out the sound of everything outside of your current occupied yeah. space. Yeah, it can surround you. It can put it. it oh, let's be poetic. It will put a shroud around you, my friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get your very own shroud here, right at the Ren Fair. 14 shekels. We only what? accept shekels at this Ren Fair. At yeah, this uh, Ren Fair. <laughs> oh, that? That's not period at all. This is just a copy of Hex Angel. I want my uh, five uh, shekels we'll back. Take, we take payment in Hex Angels. So I'm going to confess something to you guys. I'm I'm that guy when I'm at work. Ladies and gentlemen, I work with other guy. people. I work, I work with other people. Uh, but I also listen to my music out loud at my desk. And so everybody was making fun of me uh, a lot this week because I was doing the, I'd listen to all these albums before, but I was doing the, you know, the final push leading up to the, uh, to the episode tonight. And um, I'm, I remember listening to fate and people coming over to me and being like, everything, everything. Okay, buddy. Is everything, is everything. All right. And I'm you like, right? yeah, great. And then pestilence came on and then everybody was like making fun of me, like, like fake dancing and, you know, acting all crazy. And they'd walk by and be like, oh, yep. He's listening to his rivet head music over there. Uh, you know, and, uh, and I'm, and I'm just like, dude, this is not real rivet head music. No, but, um, you know, but whenever we got to this one, everybody started getting real concerned again. Like, Hey man, is everything okay? You need to take a break. You need to go to, you need to go, you need to go take that sweet, sweet lunch break. I think there might be some leftover nachos in the break room. You might want to, might want to go check those out. Get a bag you know, of double cheeseburgers for you right here. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely one of those, um, one of those mood albums. It's a real where, like, wellness you can't just check show of the record. Yeah, you can't just show this to somebody and be like, yeah, this is what I've been into lately without like having them call the suicide prevention hotline. Like, if this guy needs help, we're, we're intervening like right now. Um, but the positive side of it is that I was complaining on the earlier records about how it's all meandery and doesn't ever go anywhere or whatever. And what else you got? This is what else he had, which was just a double back down on the fate sound, uh, you know, as much as he could. But, you know, this record sounds better. It was recorded in 2003 so it sounds way better than uh than what you'd have with those like early 90s cassettes and everything so like yeah it it definitely hit me good but i wouldn't consider it to be a record that you should just like listen to yeah I'd just hop into definitely a vibe and i don't mean a good vibe kind of record for me it's 2006 gentlemen the lust for blood is real how long was it going to be before vampires started becoming part of the equation? Right Not around the time longer. when Queen of the Damned had been out for a year and a half, I think. When did Queen of the Damned come out? 2003 or 4. 2002 movie. 2002, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we got Vampire Lestat vibes. We got you know this this is a uh, this album cover kind of like a we have a the vampire lady who also looks like one of the Greys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of got this is dual purposed alien vampire alien sex fiend. I feel like musically this band came or this dude. It's let's be honest, it's a dude uh, came back. And I think I think he came back with a vengeance on this one. Um, I think I found this one to be immediately listenable, in the sense of like like a comeback album. I and mean, he wasn't like gone like objectively that long, but like I don't know, he comes back like full dance party insanity here. Yeah. Um, and well, and I, introduces all the creep that he possibly can introduce. I listened to because I saw on this one that Ghost in the Circuit was like the number one played song. From, from Spotify and I listened to it and I was like yeah that makes sense this is a very good song and very accessible song I liked it I I, I like which is what a bold statement I liked it I think that's all I can say about this record I I found it enjoyable. enjoyed it I liked listening to it I think it's clear this band is not one you listen to every day looking for meaning it's a stack of possible atmospheric choices for the next hour and a half and that's okay. In a strange way, it's made for streaming, you know, it, it, because of where your headspace needs to be. Like, I I don't see myself going in pi- and purchasing the physical of this. In fact, I don't even know if there is a physical of this. But, like, you know, this catalog feels now very much, like, made tuned in for streaming. Because it is, like, I'm not in the, I am not in the, uh, the headspace to do that one but I, I could listen to ghost in the circuit again oh yeah i i 100 agree and, and like it's funny because i think yeah as a as a like band shuffle like just shuffle everything from this band all in one one big blender you're gonna have an enjoyable experience that afternoon yeah because again it, not everybody's eating the massive chocolate cake that is this band i i kind of had that experience today as i was re-going because I, I went back through things and i went through things a little bit faster than the you know, then the first time and just kind of being like, OK, let's let's get a track off of each album or let's just do the first 30 seconds from these first five tracks, you know, just to see what vibe that they're setting up and what thing they're setting up. But there is also track sameness that absolutely, is, which I do believe plagues the whole catalog, which is like repeated themes, repeated ideas, repeated, 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 which when you're in a mood and you're locked in the mood, it's almost like a movement in a symphony. No, that is symphonic. But like it's a movement where it's like a, just a bridge into the next aspect of it. But like when taken as a whole, it's like, yeah, I've heard this song before. And I really started to notice it around this time. I liked the album, but I was like, OK, I like the music more right. than I can point to one record and say, I like this. Like you're talking about Ghost in the Circuit. That immediately stood out to me because it reminded me of Paranoia Agent, my favorite anime. Ooh. So now we're at a point in the discography where everybody's heard something before and we're okay with it. I think I see where this is going. It's 2009. The art of breaking apart. Do you like to dance? I do like to dance, Matt. This is my favorite one. Really? Out of all of them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I know. I know. It's a, it's 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 a garbage take, but um, and I'm not That's saying it just to be the guy that has garbage takes. Um, I really liked this one. I don't know if I could say this about many of the other albums, but this one is probably the most fun. It's more fun. First of all, for the industrial dance side of it, he goes hard mm-hmm. on this one, and it's 2009, baby. There's no more of that analog, like analog, you know, no. transferred via floppy disk to a 30 meg hard drive sound here. This is like straight up, like in your face modern, modern dance, dance music. music. Yeah, yep. um, and that's not really the parts of the album that I like. The parts of the album that I like are songs like Black Rainbows. See, I was going to mention Black Rainbows because I was like, "Is this is like a, this is such a shitty thing to say. This is like a fucking song, right? <laughs> it is. It's a real song. Not and this album, that, like, they sound seven, like a real band. Yeah. I had never heard this record. I'd never given this the time of day. The album cover made me think like, 
oh boy, what's happening? Then you start tripped out and you basically got like druids. And yep. the, you know, like what is the vampire Lestat pops back up and rises, pecking away at a keyboard. Yeah. And then I get, yeah, I get black rainbows and I'm like, huh? You're one step away from being a professional wrestler. Well, you've got like vaporized too that comes in after tripped out and it's like, Exactly what it says on the tin, you know, like <laughs> you, you are literally getting vaporized by sick dance beats and black rainbows comes out of nowhere where a homeboy just busts out an acoustic guitar. And can you imagine this? It. Can you imagine this coming on in the middle of your velvet acid Christ, like gyms, you know, chip trip to the gym? I don't know why you would listen to Velvet Acid Christ at the gym, but uh, I love warehouse sounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe it's like just you in a single uh, like exercise bike in the middle of an abandoned warehouse. But regardless, you're not going to identify like they're not even recognizable as Velvet Acid Christ here. Mm -hmm. And that's no. actually kind of what I like about it, because it's it's so different. It's finally answering the whole what else you got question of yeah. like, can you can this guy write a song? And don't get me wrong, as far as like acoustic-y, ballady songs, it's not like Black Rainbows is the greatest song I've ever no. heard. No, like, but I like, feel like, like... All. It's me, Andrew. It's a little long, but I mean, that's kind of the, the dude we're dealing with here. But you also, knowing the task at hand, when you get to that song, you're like, finally. It's like, finally, just something different. Yeah. And this whole record is kind of, yes, it's in the lane. Yes, there's the same samples, the same beats, the same everything. Same songs. Same song. But there it's is fucked up freaks on here again. But at least it's cranked up a little bit. It's not the same. Like there is a grittiness to the earlier stuff, but like, you know, I think I mentioned it earlier. Like this does have more oomph now, but it isn't the same as the murky warehousey stuff before. So in some ways it really excels, and in other ways it's like, what's happening? <laughs> Well, and I like that Black Rainbows wasn't just a one-time occurrence because I like killing a stranger just as much. Okay. Um, weird thing to say out of context, but I, I do enjoy some killing a stranger um, because he does the same thing and he doesn't have that treatment on his voice. You know, he's just singing into a microphone on this one. There might be some small effect that I'm not hearing, but he he is clear and there's like piano and acoustic guitar and it's slowed down and the art of breaking apart kind of continues on in that same yeah. sort of vein. It's almost like he must have found an acoustic guitar at a Goodwill or something before, you know, and being like, you know what the next evolution of the Velvet Acid Christ sound is? This thing right here. I'm going to go out Eight on a limb bucks. and say he was listening to David Bowie when he wrote these songs. Because this I very that, much yeah. reminds me of late late 90s like or heathen right around heathen this really does remind me of the late 90s david bowie records where he kind of did that drum and bass thing for a while mm. heathen's a great example and then for lack of a better word he just recovered but still had that dark 90s vibe to it and i think that this fits right in there but it's mixed in with all the as you would expect dance beats and i think that's okay because fans of Velvet Acid Christ are listening for the dance vibe. They're listening for the atmosphere, and it just goes somewhere unexpectedly dark. I think that's okay, though, when you're listening to this type of music in 2009, because this was not the popular genre at the time. Oh, not even. Not even. What do you guys think of Caustic Disco? So, I don't have many thoughts on Caustic Disco. <laughs> it's alright. Well, I, I think what happens is, like, I get into this album... I'm digging on it. I'm, I'm liking kind of the vibe that's happening here. It feels like if I was at the end of a, a race with the last record where I'm just like, okay, yeah, we've had a lot of this in our discography. We've, we've had a lot of what I've just heard. This does feel like a breath of fresh air into it. Yes, there's the same things happening, but they're happening in new ways. And I'm getting at least a strummy guitar and honest lyrics that I can understand. I'm I'm feeling better. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I it struck me in a way where it's like like finding a pot of gold or something, you know, just being like, oh, my God, here is something different. And like, I'm sure diehard Velvet Acid Christ fans hate that stuff, right? Like 
No, Give man. Me. Dude, Neuro I need a Rama for life. You know, where's, like, where's my chain? I'm not having right. fun with knives anymore, Matt. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I enjoyed that I, as an adult, you know, just to steal your terminology. Like, yeah. I, you know, as, as an older person, I'm like, oh, well, this sure is nice. It's incredibly depressing and dark, which is on brand. So mm -hmm. it, it's what, like, what's the problem? Yeah. Are we ready for Mall Dyer? We're ready. 2012. I'm ready to get that septic rinse on, you know? Septic <laughs> rinse. <laughs> so did you fall in a cesspool and now I'm standing here with a hose trying to clean up the mess? Or do I have a hose well, you know, I used from the septic? You know, you know that I used to install cable, right? Like out in the boonies. Like I installed satellite dishes and things. Anybody that gets satellite dish gets satellite dish because they're far enough away from civilization to not be able to get cable, right? Yep. So, uh, Let's just say your boy here has been has actually had a septic rinse happen uh, a couple of times where you're like, oh, it's weird. My foot's wet. But it's not raining. Then you like look slowly over at the septic tank that's over on near right next to Farmer John's house. And you're like, Ugh. and I'm going to have to like drive. I'm going to have to take my shoes off. I'm going to take off these giant like worker boots. Yep. Put them in the back of my van. Steel and toe, then right? smell it. Yeah, and then smell it for the two hours driving home because we are out in the middle of nowhere, baby. You of all people, I would expect to have strapped the boots to the outside of the van some way. Uh, well, I actually, what I used to do is I used to tie the laces to my ladder rack. And oh, if yeah. I was going, yeah, if I was going fast <laughs> enough, though, you could see just a pair of boots like flopping in the wind. <laughs> but I mean, hey, you do what you got to do. But yeah, so septic rinse, uh, definitely. Uh, Definitely hit me in a very personal place, and you know I appreciate it. <laughs> no, this bit, album's a little bit darker, a little less yeah. dancey. Although the dance, the dance beats are here and, and kind of omnipresent. You know, they never re the BPMs never really go below a hundred. I don't think, uh, but I do feel like this album's not as fun as uh, the art of breaking apart. I feel like this one's a little bit sadder, um, a little bit, a little bit darker. It's a standard attempt at sounding unhappy. It's still kind of cribbing the 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 skinny puppy, you know, like. And you know what? Use what works. <laughs> but this is what the know. people are here for. Give it to them. Exactly. There's a whole legion of fans at this point that they only want this. I have to admit, though, that I feel like it's starting to sound a little bit. A little bit less unique. One of the things that I really liked about about some of these, and even KMFDM, you know, when we talked about them, um, I like that early raw sound mm -hmm. in kind of a nostalgic way, but also because a lot of these industrial bands in their early careers all kind of existed on their own island in a way. You'd say, oh, Velvet Acid Christ does this. Skinny Puppy does that. Ministry just throws slop onto a microphone and that's the album. You know, like there, there's a lot of like very unique nuance to these bands, but I think there's something to what you were saying earlier about as the technology advanced, everybody's using the same beat library. You know, they're all yep. using the same, you know, whereas before they had to find creative ways to kind of make those sounds themselves. Now you can just order and a subscription. So, and those machines were so damn fussy that you might be able to get your machine to work one way and Joe couldn't get my machine to work that way. Like, And when you put those two things together, it becomes an interesting industrial song. Right. Yeah. Like Dan, Dan's MP12 work, his pads were super sensitive, but mine were like, I had a hammer on them. Yeah, it's just like there is something interesting about that strange analog to digital transition. And that stuff was, I mean, full analog synths are already you like you can go back and they're, they're kludgy. They sound weird. Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of sounds that but like th those bridge instruments that don't exist as much anymore or if they do exist, they're so polished and easy to use. There is something about like, I can make it do this. And I only know that because I spent 80 hours with this damn thing. Right. Turning all yeah. of these knobs to exactly the right spot for exactly oh, I what I want to do. I have Sharpie. Every, I have different color Sharpie for where it needs to be for this sound. Different lengths of Sharpie for different sounds. I have a key written in my in my notebook of what 
the lengths mean and the colors mean. I have a piece yeah. of tape on this key, so I know to push it extra hard to make it sound just right. Yeah. I mean, like, there is an element of that that, I, that Dan is 100% about it missing. And also a genre-wide sameness that that is you know it is what it is but i mean it's yeah it's not unique to industrial either oh you know, no 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 if no, you no. get into me you know, everybody jokes about how every metalcore band sounds the same and then i put on my resident old man hat and say it didn't used to you know what i mean like it's it's definitely something that is like it's just a sign of success in a way that that, that something became so popular and so important to people that somebody built a tool to make it easier you know like right I, I and i respect that and i that's also why i respect even though i know it sounds like we're like slamming on these records i don't think we've run into a single album by this band yet that we've been like oh my god what were they doing here no there isn't a part of me that feels that way the the thing i feel more of is like i'm impressed with the early stuff that you were able to get that. And I'm interested in where he went in in the more modern stuff to say, okay, from where you started to where you are, where the critique for me comes in is on the bigger level of the genre itself used to allow you to push the boundaries a little bit more. I feel that it's kind of, I feel like he could make this record in his sleep. I, I agree. I think it's, there's the work that you do because you love it. Like we podcast in addition to our uh, normal jobs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's a certain amount of love and, and th that goes into that. And then there's the work that we do when we're at work. We don't do bad work, you know, because we're all still employed, right? Right. Uh, we, we don't do bad work, but we don't do it with the same gusto that we do a passion project of ours. Right. We are the CEO of our own podcast company, you, see, you know, so mm -hmm. to speak. But we're not the CEO of the company that we work for. And I think you get to a certain point in your career, though, that even when it is your pet project, I mean, when you're this many albums deep, I do feel like some of these later on albums were a little bit like, OK, I'm punching in for eight hours. OK, now I'm going to punch out. I right. also think these are the records he made for fans, not for the clubs, because mm -hmm. of the drastic change in the specific production choices. You mentioned it earlier, Matt. There's more bottom end to these later records so now i'm purchasing this album and listening to it on my own stereo which is badass because it's the 2010s and we can do that mm -hmm. so now you're not taking the same mix to the clubs where you know the pa is tweaked for bottom end you have to give everyone what everything was supposed to sound like in the first place so for me i think that's a good showing of where the band is as a whole and i know it's one guy but yes you can make this record in your sleep but he's still making records right and and that's i think that's the point right like he's getting to do the thing he likes to do you don't you don't go through the fucking effort to come up with song titles all this work all these things that he has to do to get one of these out it is a lot more effort than yeah he could do it in his sleep so that's kind of a, I'll take back that critique a little bit, walk it back and say, I think musically he, he may be at a point where he doesn't need to challenge himself in the way that he may have in the past. But now it may be that it's okay because now I'm just doing it for the people who love what I do. And that's what I want to do. And if you're an artist and you get to that point, you, you're, you're good. You, you know, did like, it. You're fucking good. You did it. You did why you do the work. 2014 subconscious landscapes i like this one i like this, this is one. really cool yeah this is the one with the female vocalist and she yeah. sounds like madonna and it fucking works it works great it really lends itself to the style it doesn't sounds like it shouldn't but yeah no i i i really enjoyed this it's so great how we started off as like palpatine sitting in a cave right like but like that sort of um, that that just that 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 acrid sort of I don't know feeling. And you can say it one time Dan. now. Unnatural, unnatural. Yeah, but like I think that um, this is like the pure moods of of Velvet Acid Christ. You know, like it's so atmospheric that I have to admit it was hard to actually sit down and just listen through. Okay, um, I accept that. Yeah, but I accept that's, that. Yeah, 
Um, it was hard to it's hard to just put on and listen to, but it's great. I think that that's the it's not hard to listen to because it's like bad or, or not enjoyable. It's just that it's very sparse. Yes. In yes, records yes, yes. that I'm used to them absolutely filling every single second of my time with a variety of different sounds. But I like this more like sort of stripped down approach, adding in, adding in, you know, um, melodic vocals, you know, and, and doing it right. <laughs> you know, um, like dude didn't just get up onto the microphone and be all like, all right, let's try this. Let's see what the old engine can pull out. You know, he went and found a he went and found a very, very, very good vocalist um, to, to kind of accentuate what he was throwing down here. And I think it blends really well. Don't get me wrong. There's there's absolutely tons of our boy, you know, with oh, you know behind a yeah, wall he static on here. Himself. It's fine, um, but it, it really shines. I mean, the opener barbed wire garden is like ten out of ten. Velvet like, acid Christ, yeah, yeah, and it's amazing too because it's it actually sounds like something I would have heard on like the Batman Forever soundtrack, you know, like back in the day. Um, soundtrack was way better than that movie. Yes, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I could see this coming on after Kissed by a Rose, you know, like maybe sounding a little bit worse than it sounds here in this nice, beautiful 2014 uh, experience. But uh, yeah, no, I thought that this was really cool and um, has a lot of variety overall where you have a, you have songs like I Hate You that is just classic Velvet Acid Christ sound um, or like even stuff like uh, even stuff like Evil Toxin. But like, I don't know, man. Um, they really, he really, you know, we talked so much about the last album about how he felt like, oh yeah, I'm doing this just kind of like for the listeners and I'm comfortable with where I'm at. Clearly he wasn't to be on this, that album. He wanted to, to branch out and do something different. Yes. It's an interesting change. Like someone wanted to be that female vocalist from the nineties and have that kind of remix sound, but didn't have anyone to make music with. So what better person than the guy from Velvet Acid Christ who can put together that atmospheric, old school sounding industrial. And then you get the end result, which I wouldn't even call it a change of pace. It's just another piece of everything we've heard from industrial over the years. We've heard the remix records. We've heard the Europop influenced alternative from the 90s. We've heard the dance records we've heard the disgusting sounding black metal vocals that were early in this discography there's all these different pieces to it this was an interesting change of pace in 2014 it was the opposite of everything else i was listening to so it's interesting to hear it now because it's it's difficult sometimes to find somebody who's just making the music that they want and it not sound like shit. there it is 2019 aura oblivionis Oh, we're skipping Dire Land. It's a remix album. According to my own rules, I'm not really supposed to talk about it. <laughs> um, but it is, it, it does have some really cool remixes of songs that were on Subconscious Landscapes. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right. I probably spent the least amount of time with this record, meaning that I couldn't tell you anything about it. It's kind of, I mean, it, it's kind of like, do you like Velvet Acid Christ? I'm okay with them. Oh, okay, then you're going to be fine with this one. All right. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's it's what a lot of bands do that are legacy acts like this. They'll put out an album that's weird, like the last record, and then this one they're kind of like, all right, let's Back get to down to roots. that. Let's get down to that good dirty again, you know, with songs like Adventures and Babysitting the Antichrist, which is one of my favorite song titles by them. Um, but yeah, it, this one's kind of hard in a way it kind of goes back to that um it kind of goes back to that sort of velvet acid christ sound i know it's hard to uh it, we, we've been talking about it all night but it's kind of hard to put my finger on just a mix of dance beats depressing stuff side a i feel like goes kind of the hardest with the beats and then once you get to like um the eighth track uh romero it gets more like melodic with female vocals again and i'd say the last four song four or five songs sound like uh sound like the last album so he had a little bit of either he had carryover ideas from that session or he just was trying to make a super dynamic record but i think the sequencing is cool is that it builds you up and then kind of slowly lulls you back back down um but yeah overall i can't say that they blew my mind on this one but i mean again 
and I know I'm beating this dead horse, but like there's a huge difference between what we do on this show where we kind of consume everything in one sitting, so to speak, versus being a fan of the band and getting that smile on your face when your favorite artist releases a new record every couple of years. You know, so as a fan of the band, you're going to be like, yep, he still got it, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, like, uh, we, we uh, a peek behind the curtain here. We took a, m- a moment or two break, and I listened, re-listened to a few seconds of uh, this album, and I was like, yep, it's it's Velvet Acid Christ. Like, there was no mistaking. Like, yep, that's it's them. Great job doing what you do, guys. <laughs> we did it. I, I five. Get back in the Velvet Acid Christ factory because you got work to do. I think this is exactly what you want almost 30 years later. Damn, that's crazy. It's been a long time writing those looping dance beats that we play in the warehouse with the smoke machine and the flashing green lights. Um, we have a doorman now. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we've had one for about 15 years. So congratulations. We're keeping some of the younglings out. Not all of them, because let's be honest, they know how to get in through the back door. Like Star Wars younglings or? Master Skywalker, what do we do? No, it's just... Yeah. Well, that, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense then. Adventures in Babysitting the Antichrist is about Obi-Wan Kenobi. This, this is all starting to come together. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this was a hell of a journey. Yeah, man. But it wasn't a very, like, hey, guys, did you like the first part of the journey? Yeah, okay. Well, the second the second part of the journey is the same as the first part, but we paved the road this time. You know, like, yep. I, and. And so it's not a journey in the sense of, like, I went to all these places and look at all these wonderful destinations I arrived at. Yeah, but you went to a cool few places. Uh, I would say in the context of the overall sound, though, it's really more like, you know, I, I would, had to go to these really, really crappy gas stations where I had to ask a, I had to ask a guy for a key to use the bathroom. And, but then I made it, you know, 100 miles into my journey, and now all of a sudden I there's quick trips, and I can just walk in, and there's heated toilet seats, and they've got they've got horrible food on rollers that i can that i can buy uh and and put in my body you know like the experience never goes outside of the experience if that makes sense there's nothing that there's nothing that jumps out to where you're like oh wow this was really cool this was really notable but i think also there's a reason why bands like this last as long as they do because what they do works and it works really really well i I think that's that is if you can do the work in art or music that you do stay consistent to it put out a volume of work and basically leave with everybody going that's the artist then you win and then it doesn't fucking matter what i think because you did it (laughs) yeah i mean any criticism that we lob at velvet acid christ it's gonna be like that meme where he's wiping his tears with hundred dollar bills you know what i mean like it's like dude i I got this you know um i did i don't know how much money uh, I mean, it's not really made, even but, yeah. a money play. It's it's yeah. a I have created a body of work that has a fan base that asks for more work, and I give it to them. And I'm still I'm that great of a dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm still living, and I'm still doing what I do, and I'm okay. So I guess the wellness checks worked out. Although you know, un- <laughs> uncovered graves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is, you know, there is now the part of me that goes like some of these things and some of these subject matters are like hokey. But like in 93, it was like, oh, that's the darkest it gets, guys. That's so dark. And then it's like, uh, no, no, that's not even close to as dark as it gets. You've not experienced the darkness that I have currently, that I have journeyed through. I was born in the darkness. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Molded by it. Oh, I don't have a cup around. I was like, we, we, are we doing the Bane voice? We, we do the Bane voice. There it is. I did not experience the industrial until I was a man. By then, it was nothing to me but smoke machines. Look out for it in 2022. And, we're going to talk about the hardcore sounds. band. <laughs> in 2022, we're going to talk about the hardcore band Bane as Bane. We're all. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to listen all to that Bane. Bane. Yeah, so that'll be, uh, that'll be a thing that, that we do. When we're just really looking for an opportunity to jump the shark, that's going to be... That's going to be our F- Arthur Fonzarelli moment. Well, gentlemen, if you discontinue Industrial December, I understand. But if you would like to have a one episode Industrial December, I would love to return next year with Frontline and Assembly. And I had a delightful time listening to Velvet Acid Christ for as much as you can have a delightful time listening to somebody <laughs> be sad. Uh, there it is. It's that time. Final thoughts on Velvet Acid Christ. Dan. 
uh, if you like anything by Velvet Acid Christ, you're going to probably like everything by Velvet Acid Christ. Um, but, you know, th there is a distinction to be made because last year, the three of us sat down and we did this again with another band called KMFDM, and we were over it real quick. And I'm not going to necessarily say we weren't over it with Velvet Acid Christ, but, you know, there, there's a sheer volume of, of work that Velvet Acid Christ has done, the, the great sort of career that he's had making this kind of music. Whereas with KMFDM, it was excessively too much. <laughs> and I guess my final thought is that, you know, um, they're, or he, rather, it's a, again, it's it's really just one guy driving driving the car here. But what he's done is amazing. It's consistent. And it's enjoyable overall because, I mean, honestly, guys, I've given it a really hard try, and I'm obviously not the biggest fan of industrial <laughs> overall. However, when I was listening to these albums, there was enough originality in his sound. Not necessarily original in comparison to his other works, but in comparison to others, um, he had a way of doing this in a way that was enjoyable even for somebody that wasn't into it uh, as much as... Uh, you know, a diehard fan back in the day would have been. Matt Nas, what about you? I respect everything uh, CEO Dan just said um, because it's true and uh, you can't argue with the truth. I very much enjoyed the the trip into um, into the catalog of Velvet Acid Christ, but it does bring a, uh, a point. And my final thought is if you are an individual bedroom producer, a, a dreamer in a schemer inside of your own room, and your intent is to put out music, get an editor. Get somebody who can challenge your ideas that you listen to because you need somebody to say, this doesn't need to be 16 tracks. I think you got it in 12. This doesn't need to be a five minute song. I think you had it at four. And I think with that, you will find much more peace in your work. <laughs> so my suggestion. My suggestion, get an editor. I enjoyed listening to this band. I think it has the right balance of atmosphere and dance most of the time. Generally, no matter which record you choose, if that's all you're going to listen to for the next hour and a half, whether you're doing nothing or doing something, it's going to be okay. I think the band, and I know it's one guy, but Velvet Acid Christ has the formula down for what an atmospheric industrial record is supposed to sound like. And after all this time still putting out records, this has its super fans. But even if that's not you, you need to take a break from whatever it is you're doing and get a change of pace, get a change of focus. Just have everything spun up a little bit, but not too offensive. You're not going to listen to the lyrics anyway because you're going to get into the atmosphere and that's going to be what gets you through the next hour and a half of your day. So definitely listen to this band. It's worth it. You're going to enjoy it. And I really think that's the best thing you can say. Dan, what's your album of the week? Well, you know, I had to kind of get away from the super industrial stuff a little bit. And um, I think I've done all right this this year with it, with it this month. Uh, but I'm ready to get back to a little bit more guitars, bass, drums, uh, vocalist screaming like a dying calf, you know, sort of sound. Uh, but I, I had to go with uh, Spirit Box, uh, Eternal Blue. Um, Spirit Box is a band that you probably heard a lot about this year uh, from us and from other people. But uh, I guarantee you, as as the time as time goes on, you will not be able to turn around without hearing the name Spirit Box. Um, it is one of the best combinations of you name a style of heavy music. Uh, it's got it's got the techy techy metalcore stuff. It's got some new metal stuff in there, and then you've got a you've got a vocalist, um, Courtney Laplante, who is just an absolute powerhouse of a singer and screamer, uh, and it just ties everything together very very well. Um, it might actually people have been asking a lot about my top five, and I'll, I'll have a of the year, and I'll have a YouTube video of that up at some point soon. But um, before that, I just have to say Spirit Box is on there, and it's actually a contender for my album of the year. Whoa. Okay. And Zayo put, put out a new album this year. Oh, holy shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I mean, obviously, you. listen to that one, too. But yeah, this is, this is really good stuff. Matt, what about you? Okay. So this is right after Christmas, and I'm sitting here, and I'm saying, 
You want to change a pace. You want something that's not what you're listening to right now. You want it. And you happened for Christmas. Somebody saw that you were like looking at records and they're like, ah, I bought you a record player. Then I'm going to point you to something I've been listening to this year, this whole year. And that's Blue Note Jazz, baby. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because you can get brand new copies of classic Blue Note records pressed this year for 25 bucks which is a ton of money. But for records, unless it's an indie artist that's putting it out themselves. It's about right. Yeah. It's an appropriate price for AAA, which is all analog from beginning to end, pressed at um, pressed at Optimal in Europe, shipped here, 25 bucks. Brother. I, I just picked up uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Mes- Messengers, the Big Beat. It's amazing. Bobby Humphrey, Fancy Dancer. Again, this is jazz. This is funk. This is stuff. These are these are palate cleansers. But we spent a lot of time in this episode talking about technology. And this is peak fucking analog. This is the music of which the method was developed for. You know what I mean? This is the technology that this music was made for. And they all sound fantastic. And they are worth your time. So I would suggest that if you got a record player this year and you're like, yeah, I like this and I've never given jazz a chance, go into this Blue Note Classic series. They're $25 and just pick one. Just pick one. The covers are all pick the coolest cover that you can see because these covers are iconic. They're all cool. (laughs) They're all freaking cool. Arc Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, two of the most cool covers I've ever seen. There's one, Monin. You've never seen the cover for Monin. It's iconic. It's beautiful. So check it out. Blue Note Jazz. That's uh, I, I, I swap out records too much to name one. But uh, if you really, really, really need one from me, get the Sidewinder by Lee Morgan. What about Miles Davis Volume 1 and 2? Is that in there? It. I'm sure it will be eventually. Basically, Don Was, who um, is the president of Blue Note, said out loud, he was like, our catalog is in an important piece of American history. Yes. And we need to press it and we need to make it affordable. I am not the authority, but I'm related to the authority and I'm going to say it. The Blue Note jazz records are some of the best jazz, especially if you're telling me the classic series is being pressed now. Yep. If you're not listening to jazz, this is some of the best jazz you can listen to. Yep. I would say get the Sidewinder, Lee Morgan, Cool Strutton, Sonny Clark. Yes. If you like organ, you got Jimmy Smith, uh, Back to the Chicken Shack. If you like guitar jazz or, or like I'm, I'm more of a guitar guy, uh, Idle Moments, Grant Green is out there. Nothing is out of print in terms of like the run is open, but some things might not be available. So if you're looking to explore that area this is a great time because they realize the market is there i know this is uh normally a metal podcast but like i also understand that if you're listening to it this much you are a lover of music so i say this as a lover of music to you this is an amazing time to have a record player and be into jazz and i wasn't into jazz until i started buying these i i actually took this as a challenge to myself to expand my musical horizon. And that's kind of the challenge for you. So this year, check some of this out. Um, The more obscure stuff, you might hear something about the tone poets. That's a little bit more obscure. That gets into the jazz, the free jazz that I'm not as big a fan of. But still, if you get in there and you like it, step up tone poets, you'll like those too. There you go. Boof. One hell of a recommendation. Thanks, guys. For me, it is absolutely the album of the year. Mammoth WVH. Uh, you're still on that uh, Wolfgang Van Halen, huh? It is beyond expectation. It is one of the best rock records you've heard this Talk year. Talk to me about this. I have not heard about this lick one. So Wolfgang Van Halen, Eddie yep. Van Halen's yeah. son, did the opposite of what you expected. He didn't try to put out a record and put a band together and try to be Van Halen. He just wrote several very good rock songs. And it is a start to finish enjoy. You can buy it on his website right now. I recommend digital because I'm still waiting for the CDs. It, they are back ordered or not being produced because of everything going on right now. I don't blame you, Wolfie. You're the man. Just don't back down. Start with don't back down, Matt. You're going to enjoy it. And there's more than one like, hey, dad, I miss you in there. So oh, it's worth shit. it. It's great. It's a fucking great record. Take us out, DFT. 
If you've been listening to this podcast, first of all, thank you. And uh, second of all, if you want to reach out to us for any reason, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. If you want to give us suggestions on what bands you want us to talk about on the show, I know sometimes it takes a long time for us to get those requests out, but we do pay attention to them, and I factor in your guys' suggestions heavily when we're talking about, you know, when we're making the schedule on what bands we want to discuss on the show. Um, if you guys want to tell us for doing a good job uh, or tell us for doing a bad job, I don't have to tell you guys to reach out to us to do that. Um, but uh, there's a lot of ways you could do that. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash discography discussion. You can follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal, also on Instagram at Discuss Metal. You can follow our YouTube channel at Discuss Metal Dan. And, uh, you know, you can always send us an email at Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. So if you guys need anything, make sure to reach out to us. We're always there. Another place that we're always there is also on our Discord server. There will be a link in the show notes that will take you to our Discord server where ourselves and fans of the show congregate almost daily, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Get in there, share some memes, talk about music, talk about the new episodes or just whatever's on your mind. And uh, we hope to see you guys there hanging out. Thanks again for another wonderful year of discography discussion. We are not going anywhere. And I am currently in the planning stages of most of next year's calendar. So uh, get your suggestions in now. And on that note, this has been episode 253 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things Discography Discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you are not a patron, you can become one at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks. Hey, Joe, can I borrow some money? One dollar a month gets you to that exclusive album review feed. Keep it rolling, baby. Matt Nas and all the podcasts produced by Gabber Media can be found at gabbermedia.com. You will not be disappointed. Get a go. <laughs> <laughs>